Hello, and welcome to a super <laughs> lazy edition of a video that we wanted to film. Well, at least I wanted to film. I didn't put on makeup, obviously. He didn't shave. We're just embracing the general scruffiness of ourselves today. So if that puts you off this video, I'm sorry. But not sorry enough to actually do anything about it. We need to take care of our mental health more than our physical appearance. So, so. we have tea and we have a tag up on the screen over here. It's what we'll be looking at. This tag <coughs> is a Wheel of Time tag. And the first thing that you should know is that I have never read all the way through any of the Wheel of Time books. And he has done so for the entire series five times? Well, more, more than five times. Eight times? Uh, <laughs> I've, I've probably physically read, read them through five or six times, and then I've had them listened to many times more, and it is definitely my favorite 13th book high fantasy <laughs> series. It is definitely the series I have read and or listened to the most ever. Honor Harrington and the Balgariad and the Malaroon are series that I have read multiple times and have had an impact on me that would potentially compete. Okay, have we weeded out everybody who's not here for the super casual vibe? Good, all right? Because you're right. not going to have a good time. So, so yes, this is a series I love, and I've, I've forced this upon Julian in the hopes that it will eventually push her over into being a Wheel of Time watch tube channel. Here, oh, no, but... that's never going to happen. <laughs> it's too much for me. I struggle to read book two of any series, because once book one is over, I'm ready to move on to something else. <laughs> so, but Adam thought it would be fun if we both answered the questions in this official Wheel of Time tag just to see like how much I have absorbed just from like <laughs> listening because he listens to the Wheel of Time audiobook all the time so we'll see how much I have absorbed and plus for those of you who are watching this who aren't familiar with Wheel of Time he will be explaining it to me and you so together we can <laughs> learn all right we are looking over here at the screen for our questions how did you first hear about the Wheel of Time, and what made you want to read the series? I'll go first. I heard about it through him, and uh, I don't want to read the series. <laughs> okay, Adam. You should at least read The Eye of the World. You I probably that. will someday. What, all right, what's your well, On your deathbed, when yeah. you have no choice, okay, like, I will come I'm up. Like ah, I'm like dying. <laughs> you said this giant book on me, and it crushes my ribs. <laughs> I first heard about the Wheel of Time series in college. I believe I was my sophomore year, sophomore or junior year. My roommate had read all of the books up that existed up to that point in time, which was like five or six. And then I was like chatting with another friend about it who was like, you know, I've heard good things about it, but I don't think I'm going to read it because I'm pretty sure he's going to die before it finishes. <laughs> And I was like, "Well, you have a point, but I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna buckle down and read it." It sounds like my my friend. It was one of my friend's favorite books at the time, and he, like they enjoyed series, and I enjoyed many of the same series. So I'm like, "Yeah, I let's wonder, do it." I wonder if that's how people are starting to feel about Game of Thrones. Like, do I want to get started because it's clear that he's gonna die before <laughs> he finishes it? I made a bunch. He of made money. all the money and probably just got completely burned out on it. I'd be burned out on it too. Anyway, and I was like, you know what? I'm hopeful. They're going on a good clip. We're five books into the series. How much longer could it take? <laughs> How much longer could he possibly live? So I, I expected uh, that Mr. Jordan to make it through. Um, they did not, but uh, I, I it loved the work anyway. All right, what's our next question? <clears throat> if you had to choose to join an Aja in the White Tower, which would you join <laughs> and why? And this is kind of like the... Uh, which Harry Potter house would you join okay. of the Wheel of Time series? Okay. I wonder why this didn't take off as much as, like, which Harry Potter house? It's like the Harry Potter's four four tropes that you're looking at. It's easy to be like, to see yourself in a fun way. In any of them. It's kind of like your horoscope, where it's, like, really easy to be like, I am this, and if it doesn't fit, you can still, like, make it fit. Sorry to all the people who believe in horoscopes, but, um... <laughs> Anyway, so give me like a very, very, like a one sentence explanation of what all of these Ajas mean. The blue Aja is about causes. They're not necessarily all the same cause, but they champion a cause. So they're like uh, philanthropists of the, or they just are really into having goals. They're more really into having goals. Like one of them might be like, my goal is philanthropy. Someone okay. else's goal might be. So they're kind of the Slytherin because they're driven. Hmm. 
Wow, that is insightful. And if Wheel of Timers watch this, though true, they're going to be so pissed. Oh, no. The Wheel, yes, the Blue Aj is very much the Slytherin of okay, the Aj. Okay, okay. Well, um, <laughs> though we don't stand J.K. Rowling around here, I am a Slytherin, so that one's already pretty tempting. What's green? The green is it, the Battle Aj. They're the ones that are like, oh, evil dark creatures, we're going to blow their faces off with our magic. Okay. The brown Oz is we love books and libraries and we're gonna stay in our books forever. It's the Ravenclaw. Uh, the yellow Oz is the the healer, healers. Uh, they that's what they specialize in. The white Oz is the logic Oz. Uh, the gray Oz are the negotiators and the politicians. They go out there and schmooze with kings and dukes and be like, you should do this. Okay. People They're the persons. extroverts. <laughs> the extroverts. Now the green Oz's are also kind of the extroverts that like. Many green because Aja. Because you have to be, because uh, you have to be extroverted to murder people. Like well, the murder ones. They're they're the murder ones, and they also like this isn't universal, but m th many of them because they're the murder ones have lots of warders to protect them while mm -hmm. they're murdering. Mm -hmm. And then since they have all of these men around, and we all know when you get a bunch of men around, all that testosterone and Randy, they got they have to fornicate with them to keep that release you, the pent up. You know, I would just get a bunch of gay men, <laughs> and then they could have sex with each other. And I wouldn't have to worry about that shit. <laughs> you're, you're smart. You could be a green Aja and, Aja and have a bunch of gay warders. And yeah, I mean, that seems like the logical thing to do. <laughs> the red Aja are the ones that hunt down men who can channel and will go crazy. Um, so why isn't that the green's job? If they're the warriors. Because they want to bed men, not behead them. Oh, so they're the horny warriors of the green ones. Yeah, are. ten. Not not all of them, but they have kind of the like okay. air about them of being the horny ones. So like ones. they're the sex and violence crew. And the red Aja is like we don't. They don't care about the dark spawn, like the orcs and the ring wraiths and those get bad guys. Mm -hmm. They're just like, oh look, there's a dude who can cast magic. He's gonna go cray cray. We better do something so about it. They're him. like the Templars, but if the Templars were also mages at the same time. Yep, yep, that's a good okay. comparison. And then the Black Aja, I didn't know those were a choice. The Black Aja are the Aja that are actually servants of the Dark One. Oh. So those are the eight Ajas you can choose from. Okay, honestly, <laughs> the first one seems like I'm a combination of the first one and the one that just wants to sit and read books all the time. So I'm like very driven, but also like don't bother me. So I think you would be more of a blue that had like you do bookish stuff, but you like books weren't your life, but you would still enjoy books. Well, except the books I write, those ones are my life. <laughs> indeed, indeed. So you might be more of like a blue that has to go out and write the epic history. So mine, I was thinking about this a little bit. And I would either be blue, green, brown, or yellow. You have to pick one, Adam. I do, I do. What? So, whoopsies. Oh, no. I laughed too hard. Oh, no. oh, disaster. Though I often have causes, there's never been a single cause that has enraptured me, so I have to probably drop the blue, which leaves the green and the brown. And I am very torn. And, and I'm trying to like think back of like at that age when I would join like 14 to 16 when I would join the tower and or become a member like I was very combaty and aggressive I lettered in three different sports in high school but I was also like super bookish I had read thousands of books by that time quite literally I'd like read a hundred a summer you're like you were like a griffin puff or whatever <laughs> griffin claw yeah I would seriously have been torn between the brown and the green and the uh the channel I watched to pick up this tag lesbian nerdy also chose brown and they made it sound like just the bestest thing in the world the reason why they described it and it's basically that like you're gonna live hundreds if not a thousand years and you can like literally read everything in that time as a brown and you'd like you could spend a century focusing on one thing and then go off and something entirely different he spends that. an entire century just reading the wheel of time <laughs> i will try to remember to link that person's channel that he just mentioned in the doobly-doo so you can go find a channel that's more focused <laughs> on the wheel of time than mine each one comes with a question so once you've chosen your aja you get to answer a question corresponding with it so mine is blue a plot twist you didn't see coming. I, I don't know any of the plot twists, so I don't really have an answer. 
This is a spoilery video. I guess it's going to be spoilery. Spoiler I guess, like, warning. Bella the horse, I thought she was going to make it through the whole thing, and I found out that she dies, and it pissed me off. I'm pissed off for a horse who's I haven't even read. On her, I'm pissed on her behalf. She deserves to retire quietly, damn it. All right, uh, what is your question, Adam? Uh, as a brown, uh, mine is favorite piece of lore or world building. Keep, okay, Ooh. rules. You gotta pick one, <laughs> one. and you gotta Never try be. to keep it concise, Lore please. or world building. The dream world, Teleron and Rioid, and the uh, mirror worlds are probably my favorite part of world building. There's a lot in here that I do love, but it, especially at the end when you basically, you can be trained to ent step into the world of dreams naturally. And that within the world of dreams, your shape and form can be altered as, as can that of others. And the implications of that, and the fact that this is something that is like, just being discovered now, and even all of the ancients from the Second Age, the Age of Legends, didn't know about these things. And there's a lot of interesting connotations behind that. All right, what's our next question, now that we finally got that one out of the way? <clears throat> all right, so this question is officially a spoilery question from the get-go. So, if the Black Tower had Ajas, what would they be? So this is basically, we just each get to come up with a, an idea of what an Aja in the Black Tower would be. What's the Black Tower? The Black Tower is the magical university that the Cray Cray Men put together. Okay. And this is like, at the end of the series, uh, they're not going to go any crazier than they already are. I guess and they're I should to exist. possibly explain that even I know this, in the world of the <clears throat> Wheel of Time, women can use magic and men who use magic go insane. So, like, women can use it fine, men eventually go insane, they're not supposed to use it because of that. But these men have apparently created their own tower, and it will eventually just, like, go insane and blow up the world or something. I don't know what the plan is. Um, <laughs> there probably is no plan. The plan was to fight the last battle. Um, okay, After okay, that, okay, okay. No okay. Plan. Knowing nothing about this tower, my, uh, uh, Aja is a uh, chartreuse uh, <laughs> uh, and their main goal is to find raccoons and get them to wear a trench coat and go around pretending to be a human ah uh, the chartreuse aja very specific i um, might i might have to bring but it up it's, in it's my the world. rabid raccoon energy that i really want to channel with them i'm i'm doing a small D D, D campaign set in the wheel of time series 10 years after so i've kind of thought about this aja -y thing okay and my characters might in be introduced to the chartreuse at some point now <laughs> and there were several raccoons that they're trying <laughs> to coax but one of the things that i think would happen especially with a andrel having made it through and i'm gonna i'm gonna say it's the blue aja uh if i was to give it a color but it might not and it might be something else but that's just what i feel in my bones is that they would become merchants a merchant aja that's all about trade and transportation and making money how deeply disappointing when they could just be putting raccoons in trench coats I know, I know, but not everyone has the same the vision. vision. <laughs> it, it, that's exactly what I was thinking of. We're going to be here forever. Who's a like character you love, but would hate to meet in real life? Okay, so my favorite character is Pips, but he's a horse, so I would love to meet him in real life. <laughs> um, Pips the horse forever. Of the characters that I know, I enjoy Matt, but I also have heard from other reviewers that he's kind of a dick. So that's my answer. The character I think I would hate, I would love that I love, but I would hate to meet in real life is probably Perrin. Because Perrin is not a very good conversationalist, and like, we probably couldn't have a good time together. We'd just probably sit there and be like, so. Just vibing. And then like eventually he'd be like, well, I've got stuff to do and maybe I'd like to help him fix a wagon or something. And I'd be like, yay, I fixed a wagon. Yay. You know, there are days where you need to go out and you do just need to fix things. But like, I would like to have like a meet someone that could be a friend that I could hang out with. And that is not Perrin. What's a character from another book that would make a good warder? Now you have to explain what a what warder, a warder is. is. So we've got magic users uh -huh. in the system and uh -huh. only special people can use magic. And they t 
sometimes take a melee combat class person who has no magic and be like, yo, I'm a squishy mage, I need a bodyguard, and then they make a magical bond between them, and the magical bond gives both of them a little bit of a boost, but has some, spill your tea again. has some repercussions of drinking more, I'm safer now. Um, so it's basically a, a melee, non-magical character that's gotten a magical link and a boost to be a good or good or bodyguard. Okay, so we just need somebody who'd make a really good bodyguard. Can I pick a character from my own book? <laughs> you can, yeah. You should all read my self-published book, The Wolf and the Hawk. It's a fantasy romance, and I pick Ryoni, the main character from that book, because she would make <laughs> an excellent bodyguard for a mage, because she can take you out. Mm -hmm. All right, Adam, who would you pick? Mm -hmm. Bonus points is one of my characters. <laughs> I was like, ooh, can I pick one of your characters? But you kind of picked the one the that best, I... The best, best one. one. I mean, there's still Azra and Scran. Yeah, I could... I, the second thought was like, ooh, I could go Scran. I'm going to use Honor, Harrington, and their cat. <clears throat> and their cat. Because their cat, like... <laughs> that's really cheating, but that's fine. So in Honor, Harrington, the Sphinxian cats uh, are native intelligent life forms from the planet Sphinx. And they're like six-legged cats that are a little bit bigger than cats and have like more and sharper claws than cats. And they're smarter than cats. And and their emissaries are like, ooh, who are these humans? Dude, they got like thumbs and stuff. They're really going to mess things up. We need to like do something. Befriend so, the ones with <clears throat> thumbs, baby. So they sent some of their species to like tele telepathically bond with some of the humans in order to like be like, you love us. Don't eradicate us. You love us. Don't eradicate us. They didn't have us. to do that. Like, cats don't have to do that. Like, they could have just been like, hi, we are soft. I mean, they didn't know that initially. Okay. So, Honor Harrington, who is, like, they're, they're super trained martial and also, like, super space tactical. And then you also have their murder kitty that comes along, too. So, Great. you get bonus. That's a well, okay. Well, if she can bring her murder kitty, then Rioni gets to bring her horse, <laughs> Storm who is psychotic. <clears throat> mm. And by the way, also everybody's favorite character from the book. So definitely read my book if you're uh, you're interested. Shameless plug, shameless plug. <laughs> what scene from the books are you most excited about to see on screen? What about when uh, Bella dies? I don't want to see that at all. Okay. It's, uh, or the scene where one of the guy characters definitely gets raped and it's blown off completely. Mm. All I can think of is the scenes that I've heard that make me pissed. <laughs> you could have the scene where Bella trusts their rider instinctively and just like sprints right off a cliff into the into a giant ass That's Mississippi true. river with, with uh, Egwene. That's true. I think I did like that one. <clears throat> so good ponies all around. <laughs> I'm tempted to say the conflict at Shia Ghoul, because that means the whole series actually finished on TV and it didn't get, like, three books in and stop. <laughs> oh, we need to look up covers. <clears throat> what are your favorite and least favorite book covers? Okay, I'm going to bring up all the covers. I'm going to say we go with the original version. Okay. With the original U.S. release... I have seen some of the, like, original uh, um, European releases, and those are definitely the worst. Like, they have scenes, they've got, like, monsters that aren't even Trollocs that are supposed to be Trollocs on the cover. But, okay, uh, so looking at the old ones, we're going to go ahead and pick our favorites. And mine's just going to be purely aesthetic because I don't know anything I thought about it was least favorite. I thought our question said Oh, it was least it least favorite? favorite? Oh, favorite and least favorite. We were going to maybe someday, Adam and I will sit and we'll do, um, like, going through the covers and I'll just talk about them, like, on a, an aesthetic level and then he can be <laughs> yeah. like, this is how well they actually fit, fit. The, in book. the book. In the book, yeah. Um, <laughs> honestly, the one that, like, probably because of the ponies draws me the most <laughs> just looking at them is the one for the eye of the world is very centralized and like it looks like they're going on a journey and there are a couple of characters and there are a couple of ponies on it because it was in that time when it was much more in fashion to have like a scene from the book on the cover of your fantasy book and that's kind of not in style anymore but that one looks the most like, just like, I would pick up this book. So I'm actually going to pick The Eye of the World as my favorite book cover, too. And for me, it's because it is the most well done in that style of picking a scene and that I can look at it and actually be pretty confident of who those characters are. So many of the other ones I look at, I'm like, uh... Who is this supposed to be? 
what what is happening here even my least favorite is definitely knife of dreams which is just a bunch of people fucking standing around a table that, that doesn't make me want to read your book what on earth about that makes me want to read your book oh good i can't wait for the exciting standing around a table scene many of these covers even the u.s release ones are surprisingly bad they're Mm -hmm. If if anyone watches this video and you want to see us go through all of the covers, comment below and let us know. I'm gonna have to go with the dra the Dragon Reborn because the dude with the axe, like it, it literally looks like they copy and pasted some of the crappy uh, Czechoslovakian cover releases. Because there's like this this guy doesn't even fit in this universe. What the hell is he Where doing? Where did you here? come from, sir? Are you lost? <clears throat> all right, what's our next question? This is gonna be so. What's a location in the Wheel of Time that you'd like to visit? I suppose there's probably some really cool libraries. Go to Tar Valen, the women's spellcaster city in their great big library. It's also supposed to be very beautiful. Uh, Ogier stone masons carved all the buildings. Mm. Where is Avienda from? <clears throat> ah, Avienda's from the Aiel Waste. It's a desert oh, that sounds area, delightful. area, but they have the city of Ruadon now built in ancient times, and it has a giant lake, and it's basically sunny and warm all the time, and has plenty of water there. Uh, and Okay, that sounds good. I'll go there. <laughs> in the, I believe it's the third book, in their crossing from the Aiel Waste into Karian, and they look at the spine of the world, and they see in the heights of the cliffs so high up that you probably even can't breathe very easily up there, an old city slash village from before the breaking of the world. And I would specifically, with magical enhancements to make sure I could breathe and stuff like that, like to go there and check that out and see that, like, that's probably like the Pompeii of Randland. Randland. Yeah. They, call, they call it Randland. Randland. The main character's name is Rand, isn't it? Yeah. Randland. Sounds like a hymn-themed <laughs> theme park. <laughs> Let's go to Randland. I can't wait to ride the Rand coaster. <laughs> anyway, so I'd like to go there because, like I said, it's probably the Pompeii of the, of the Randland world. So there we go. A little bit of my archaeologist Brown showing want to go to the Fantasies World Historical Time Capsule. <laughs> this one I think is one you'll have fun with, and this is this okay. is the question that inspired me to like we should do this video because okay. I think you'd like this. If you could make a Terran Grial, what would it look like, and what would it do? And First of all, explain what one of those is. A Terran Grial is like a magical item that you don't always have to be a magic user to use. Some can be used by anyone, and they do different things. It can be an almost anything. It's like, what, what magical item would you make, and what would it do? Looking across the room, and there's a, a mask hanging on our wall, which is a comedy tragedy mask, mm. and that makes me think, maybe I would like to create a mask that could make me behave however the person I'm around wants me to behave. So, uh, like, seem to behave that way so that I, like, you never don't, piss anybody <clears throat> off accidentally. Don't have to worry about the anxiety of being with people. Yeah, because I never have to be like, oh, what do they want from this conversation? What do they want me to say? How do they want me to act? The mask could just do that all for me. And then, like, I could decide if I wanted to behave that way or not, but I wouldn't have to spend all my time wondering. I don't know, there might be <laughs> others, but that's just the first one that came to mind because I was looking at the mask on our wall, so. For me, I'm, uh, I, like, I've been thinking about this for a while, and this is something I daydreamed about making even before this question came up. Mm -hmm. And after this question, and I started thinking about it a little bit more, I figured, realized that I'm stealing a little bit from Terry Pratchett's going postal. Mm. But, <clears throat> but what I would do is they have gateways they can make in this world where you open a gateway and you can step through to anywhere else in the world. And I would make a, like, a series of rings, maybe, probably that you could wear, but maybe could be resized a little bit, that you could, like, twist the gem in it, and it turns into a gateway, and you just roll up your scroll, and you slide your scroll through this little mini gateway, and it, like, initially this came off as, like, 
I am a spy, and I need to get my reports to my friend. And my boop, report goes through. I'm a raccoon wearing a <clears throat> trench coat, and I need to get my reports to my friends. <laughs> but this could also be, like, eventually, like, this is where you start stealing from Ter Terry Pratchett, whereas, like, you put a special weighted stone around it for the destination, then it goes through the loop, and then it's then it goes into the giant Terry Pratchett mailroom mail sorting machine, and it just, <laughs> like, goes through the system and then, like, spits out a ring on the other side based on the weight of the stone around it, and again, it gets shipped off. So yeah, I would create the post office, but through using magical rings to send scrolls places. <laughs> the post office, but make it complicated. <laughs> oh, I would also like some sort of writing utensil, maybe it could be a pen, that would just magically take from my brain directly onto the page, saving me a step. So like, I could be at work, like vacuuming and thinking about my book, and the pen would be mm. taking notes, like floating along behind me with <laughs> the paper, just taking notes. <clears throat> or maybe it wouldn't even need to be near me. Like I could just be thinking it and sending it to the pen, and the pen would have all of the notes that I had thought of during my vacuuming session. That'd be pretty cool. That would mm -hmm. be a good, useful one. What's another book series you think Wheel of Time fans might like? Well, you've already kind of recommended a few. Uh, Honor Harrington. I, I, well, the, those are those are books I talked about that I like. They wouldn't necessarily be like, oh, you specifically well, like you Wheel of Time. Well, you are a Wheel of Time fan, <laughs> and you liked those, so I thought that would be a pretty solid recommendation. <clears throat> if you are, like, daunted by the Wheel of Time, I definitely, or you're, like, a younger, maybe you've read the Wheel of Time, but you, you're... 15-year-old kid uh, is like, no, thank you, that looks too much. Maybe start them off with Tamara Pierce. Uh, sort of a, a gateway, a good gateway drug to bigger fantasy, I think. Mm. For younger uh, readers, especially. So, The Wheel of Time was, Robert Jordan has clearly said, was kind of inspired by and their own personal take on... The Lord of the Rings. Of course it was. Some crazy wizard shows up to your country podunk town and is like, Come, come young hobbit, it's time to save the world. And Going on an adventure. Robert Jordan's common response to that was like, Yeah, you show up to any country town and you tell people that. And you're like, sure, here, here, here's a beer, let me go get my coat, I'll be right back. And he's like, soup, out the door. Never seen again. <laughs> and that, so that's how he's like, he's trying to do the the realistic interpretation. There is a another... Which is why they're so freaking long. There's another author who kind of did their a uh, same thing. They wrote a series that was kind of an homage to the Lord of the Rings. Their writing of that series was more of like Tolkien is the quintessential epic fantasy you want to hero's try that word again? journey. Quintessential. <laughs> the author slash authors are David and Leah Eddings and David's uh, name is on, is the only author on the Belgariad and the Malaroon, which are two two series. They're both each series is like a six book series, and and it follows that journey. And it's another author's reimagining of that Tolkien esque story. I really enjoyed it as a young reader. I think it is a little bit out of place in the modern book geist but there like if you enjoyed the wheel of time and you enjoyed tolkien and you enjoyed some of the parallels between them then i think you'd also enjoy the belgariad or the Malaru. all right so i think we've made it through the tag i wonder how long this video is probably <laughs> like half an hour at least if you manage to stay through this uh comment below whether you are a raccoon in a trench coat and pick one of your favorite questions. Well, if you're three raccoons in a drench coat, you can each pick one. Mm. Uh, and and comment on what your opinion or your answer would be to one your three one to three favorite questions. Or you can tell us which Aja you would be. Mm, that's a good. Or one. your Hogwarts house. I really don't care. Or why Julian should convert their channel into a Wheel of Time channel and read the read these books never, and nothing else. Never gonna happen. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. There are a ton of bookish and writerly videos here on this channel, so go check them out. I've been doing this for a really long time. As I mentioned, you can find my book, which is a fantasy romance. So it's Romance of the Plot, so if you like a little kissing and a little killing, it might be the book for you. You can also find me on Patreon, where for as little as a dollar a month you get exclusive content not seen here on the regular channel. And all of the links to my social media are in the doobly-doo for ease of your clicking. So, uh, Adam, are you ready for the goodbye? All right. Always ready. I will see you again next time with whatever it is I happen to be doing next time. Bye! I'm very serious.
serious goodbye. It has come to my attention that there may be a few people left in the world who do not know who my patrons are, and this will not stand. My patrons are Belle, Anne-Sophie, Callison, Ray, Artemis, Shelby, Zaire, Jesper, Irene, Scribbling Cat, Savvy, Jenny, Amanda, Lisa, Sarah, Anna W., Anna C., Light Julie, O.S., Lennox, Kit, Hayden Glade, and Persephone. There, consider yourselves educated. I'm the best people in the whole world. You're welcome. My love is gone, carried away by the wind that shakes the willow. And all the land is beaten hard by the wind that shakes the willow. But I will hold her close to me in heart and dearest memory. And with her strength to seal my soul, her love will warm my heartstrings.